Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. Crop Over 2018 was officially launched in fine style this evening at King George V Memorial Park with Crop Over Explosion. The launch began with cultural presentations of both song and dance before the Sons of God Apostolic Spiritual Baptist Church ceremonially blessed the canes. There was a new introduction to this year's launch with the naming of Crop Over Stalwarts. Cortez Callender was awarded for his contribution to music, the late Hubert Brathwaite for Arts and Craft, Chris Williams for Masquerade, and Patrick Newton for Support Services. The female outstanding work in the sugar industry went to Ernesta Williams as a female outstanding sugar worker and the male Neville Cato. Now during his address, Culture Minister John King delivered a message of hope as he looked to a brighter future with changes for the Crop Over Festival. To capitalize on the value and economic potential of Barbados's cultural industries. The Barbados Crop Over Festival remains one of those main drivers for economic growth in the industry. It is a lifeline in the generation of employment for not only the entertainment sector, but also to the many tributaries of supporting services and enterprises. It is core to the current cultural tourism offerings and therefore vital that we recreate a model for the festival that gives us a strengthened market position and a competitive advantage against the expanding list of options for carnival goers across the globe. NCF CEO Cranston Brown said the ongoing launch is about learning from our past, embracing the present, and giving a taste of the future. Around the venue today, we take you from interactive sessions that not only honor but transfer knowledge as we look at the best of the old to un encompassing the use of technology in sharing our cultural memories. And finally, we move on to the Big Bang concert with a taste of some of our best in the entertainment industry, all under the umbrella of Tuck It Up. Amid calls for work and life skills to be added to the curriculum, there's also a belief that students must be taught responsible ways of using technology. It's coming from Education Minister Santia Bradshaw. She says students today spend more time interfacing with technology than they do in classrooms. It behoves the educational system to ensure that students are educated and empowered to think analytically and to interact responsibly and ethically with the technology. Only then can we be assured that our students will be able to accrue the positive benefits that can be derived from the use of modern communication technology and not be plagued by its negative potential. Minister Bradshaw was speaking during a ceremony at the Erdison Teachers Training College to welcome to some 269 new students to that institution. She says the 70-year-old institution has a pivotal role to play in the shift to technical and vocational training. The college must be aware that technical and vocational education and training is a viable avenue through which nations can equip their citizens with the tools required to access economic independence and prosperity. Therefore, the college's programs must reflect these realities and position itself to become a Caribbean vocational qualification center in the near future. Acting principal of the college, Dr. Patricia Saul, reminded teachers that they need to find new ways of educating today's children. The world has changed a lot since then. You must also be cognizant of the fact that you are preparing students for a world that currently does not exist. Knowledge is changing on a daily basis. And so it is not enough to accumulate knowledge, but we must be able to utilize that knowledge in new situations. And if you're going to maximize the benefits to be accrued from your training, you have to be open-minded and willing to try new things. It appears Barbadians have heeded warnings following the issuance of a high wind and small craft warning for Barbados to stay away from a number of popular beaches. Red flags were posted on those beaches, including at Bathsheba, St. Joseph, signaling no swimming. The only activity on the beach was the Sargassum Seaweed Cleanup. Over at Silver Sands Christ Church, the high winds were welcome for the kite surfers who took to the sea with their various kites. 
The Met Office, in a release, had blamed a strengthening Atlantic high-pressure system for the strong surface to low-level winds across Barbados and the Lesser Antilles. Residents were urged to be vigilant and secure all loose objects in order to mitigate the effects of the impact. The small craft warning, meanwhile, will be in effect until 6 on Monday evening. We'll take a short break here and come back with more news. One lucky Barbadian could be driving away a brand new Mazda 3 this August. This as CBC launched its Socotologist Mazda Challenge for Crop Over 2018. CBC's marketing officer, Jenny Armstrong, explains how to enter. Once you spend $25 or more at any of our participating sponsors' locations, you will have the chance, first you'll get an entry form, and you'll have the chance to uh, be part of the Mazda Challenge, mm -hmm. and obviously the possibility of winning the fantastic Mazda 3. Now, the rules for the competition. Once we draw 20 persons, and the competition will run uh, June 25th until August 7th, and at 11.59 on August 7th, mm -hmm. competition closes. The names of the 20 semi-finalists will be drawn on August 8th in the lead-up to the final competition on August 11th. It'll be a series of mental and physical challenges, mm -hmm. right. and we're going to dwindle the field from 20 to 10. Mm. And once we arrive at the 10, those 10 persons earn a space on the car where you place your hand, and it's there until the last man standing. The last time CBC held such a competition was back in 2006 with the Extreme Focus Challenge. The winner of that competition was Timothy Leacock. Mr. Leacock has some words of advice for the finalists in this year's competition. Once you've been selected, mm -hmm. right, and you, you will know well in advance when you are selected. Right. Start to drink water, wear comfortable shoes. Mm -hmm. I would advise all persons in the next competition, the Mazda 3 Challenge, Bring your support, bring yeah. your friends, bring your family, mm -hmm. bring everybody. Barbados, with assistance from the United Nations Population Fund, has over the years made strides in the area of sexual and reproductive health. Liaison officer with the fund, Denise Blackstock, told the second annual sexual and reproductive health conference at Baobab Towers the help from the UNFPA dates back to the 1960s. She stresses sexual and reproductive health rights are important to the health and well-being of women and men and is essential to a fit and productive society. There are sexual and reproductive health policies in quite a number of the countries. We have policies for reintegrating teenage mothers into the formal school system. We have the CARICOM Regional Integrated Strategic Framework to reduce adolescent pregnancy in the Caribbean. And a lot of these countries have national action plans. In fact, we just completed the national action plan for Antigua and Bar Barbuda this year. We, there is a regional strategy for HIV prevention and parenting education and a model legislation on sexual and reproductive health for adolescents in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, head in sports, World Cup football and test cricket action. Stay with us. 